Hey guys and girls, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hugh Fishing. Today's episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, what I did at Lake Oneida. Uh, if you want to watch the fish catches, I kind of talk about it a little, but I'll tag that up in the top right. Um, I had a plan A, B, and C going into the tournament. Uh, super tough fishing, so I kind of had a couple different plans, and everything changed during the tournament. So if, if you want to listen to how I kind of adjusted my what I was thinking throughout the tournament, um, watch this video if you want to just watch fish catches. Top right again. Um, so stay tuned. So like I said, fishing was pretty tough for a lot of guys. A couple days of practice, me and my roommate were actually blanking. We weren't catching anything and we were actually trying to catch fish. It wasn't one of those things where you're going out just idling, graphing, and saying, oh, there's fish here, I'm not even going to try to catch them. We were actually trying to catch fish and we weren't catching them. But in practice, I was targeting only smallmouth. I thought smallmouth would win. Everybody's been talking about the past couple years that gobies had gotten in Lake Oneida. The smallmouth were a lot bigger. Uh, before I even left my house, I was like, I'm fishing for smallmouth. To me, when I go largemouth fishing at northern places, um, you really have to weed through a lot of small fish to get to big fish. And that's not kind of not really the way I like to fish. I like to go for five big fish instead of catching tons of fish. Um, and I couldn't see myself figuring out a way to catch bigger largemouth. And I even tried to largemouth fish in a couple of days in practice. It wasn't working out. I don't think I caught. I think I caught one largemouth all in practice. Uh, didn't really know. Didn't really know what to do. And I feel like I'm a smallmouth guy. So uh, if there's rocks and smallmouth, I'm in for that. And I feel like I can figure out where's the best place to go smallmouth fishing. So starting out in practice, I think the first day was pretty windy. Uh, I go out there and. I start fishing rock piles and they look super good out there there's tons of them especially in Shackleton I was actually trying to stay away from Shackleton because I knew how many rock piles were out there um, I knew how fish could move so easily but there's also the biggest population of fish there I thought the most boats would go there and I hate fishing around other boats so I was trying to stay away far away from Shackleton as I could I was staying around the North Shore South Shore uh, trying to find these rock piles and I was catching a couple uh, only on a Ned rig couldn't th couldn't catch them on a drop shot uh, I was catching them on a Ned rig, but it wasn't as windy as it would be in the tournament I think the second day of practice I go up shallow first thing in the morning and I catch one on a spook my first cast in like two feet of water and I'm like okay this is cool I didn't think people would be fishing super shallow like that and it was a pretty good one um, so I was pretty excited about that. I go further down the bank and I see probably 15, 15 good smallmouth. I'm throwing a hair jig. They're not biting it. I don't really care, but I know there's fish there. Uh, I actually go back and check that a couple times during practice later in the week, and I don't see anything. So that's telling me that the fish are were just done spawning. Um, maybe there's still fry up there, but they were moving off the bank. Um, but that was a place where I knew that there were fish. Um, so maybe I could adjust and go a little bit deeper uh, during the tournament and catch them. And I kind of kind of was able to follow them from that three foot to like a seven foot range, um, seven to 10 foot range. And that's actually where I started in the tournament. I started up on a shallower spot. Uh, if the wind had played the way the weathermen would said, I think it would have been, I think I would have had a lot better tournament. Um, I was throwing a top water where a lot of guys were throwing jerk baits, Ned rigs, drop shots. And it's it was pretty evident that difference um, between me and them how many bites I was getting doing that um, I think the last day of practice I saw I caught two huge fish on a popper my only two casts or one spot I caught one big one on a popper like my first cast I go I'm like okay that's cool go to another spot that's exactly the same catch another one on a popper I'm like okay if it's if it's remotely calm I can get away with doing this and catch them and I saw lots of stuff busting up on the surface the last day of practice and I was pretty, pretty, pretty excited about going out there. But of course, the conditions changed. So I go out the first morning of the tournament. Super windy. Supposed to be wind coming out of the south. And it actually was a wind coming out of the east, northeast. So there's no real place to be protected on the lake. Um, and I go out there on like a seven, 700 foot stretch of rock and seven feet, seven to 10 feet. And there's already six guys on it. I was a late boat draw. And. I go out there and they've all fished with a drop shot and a dead rig and I go out and I throw a popper. First cast my coiler says he has a five pounder blow up on his bait. 
couple casts later, I lose like a four pounder, couple casts, or actually, I lose a four pounder, make a cast, and that next cast, I actually had another one blow up on it. Um, my co-angler actually caught another one on a whopper popper a couple minutes after that, but the wind was picking up like crazy. Uh, so I decided to run further east to hopefully get in smaller waves. Um, and it wasn't working out. The water was getting dirty. Um, the conditions just weren't right for a top water. Um, we tried. We tried it for a long. We tried it for a couple hours. Didn't seem like it was working. Um, so we finally ended up moving offshore. Um, so top water fishing was my plan A. Going, and then I would go a little deeper. Was my plan B, and then my plan C was going to Shackleton. My plan B was a couple other small shoals that I didn't think a lot of people would be fishing. But I had caught a couple in practice off of, um, and I thought were big enough to hold fish for multiple days for me, and maybe like one or two other guys, um, because I knew that Shackleton was going to get a lot of pressure, because every time you drove by in practice, there was like 50 boats on it. And where I was, um, where I was after the topwater bite had kind of died, uh, I decided to just go play straight to plan C, which was go to Shackleton, get a couple bites, because I didn't have a fish at like... 11 or something like that um so i go to shackleton and the wind's howling at this point you're gonna have to drift every single spot um and i actually end up catching three three or four off of shackleton um on pretty small rock stretches that i knew i was gonna get a bite off if i drift like a hundred of them make a drift so i could line up and hit a hundred of them but i knew i was really only gonna catch fish off of like one or two key ones that i had marked in practice um, so I catch four fish, I go back to my plan B, which is closer to the ramp, and I think I catch one or two on a tube, and that's it. I think I have like 14-something pounds for day one. Uh, day two, I go out and I try the top water bite again. Um, right when we were launching, it wasn't very windy, it seemed like we could get away with it. Um, same thing, a lot of guys on that stretch, before I get there, I go there. My co-owner has one blow up on his bait. I have another one blow up on my bait, and they just weren't connecting with it because the waves were getting a little too big. We are only throwing a small popper, so it was a little hard for these fish to be able to see it. Um, and by that point, uh, I went to my plan B. I think I caught one, one small one, not as big as I would have liked. Um, I don't think the fish were set up on it because it was still morning. It was kind of a, a it was kind of a weird shoal where there's a lot of grass. And not very much rock so i feel like they were still roaming uh early in the morning so i cut one off of it wasn't very big leave and go back to shackleton uh, i think i catch three there so i've got four and uh, like i said in practice i was actually catching them on a ned rig only no drop shot but when you're drifting and there's that many muscles on the bottom you're gonna have to go to a drop shot uh, I actually ended up going to a flatworm and I had a really, really long leader because the wind was howling so much. Um, we were taking water over like crazy. So I was dropping on them, letting my, let my line go every once in a while. So eventually my bait would be really far away, going really slow in these rock piles. And uh, having a longer leader was key to make sure that my line above the knot was not getting, er, my line above my hook was not getting nicked. I was fine losing weights. But I really want to make sure that my line above the hook was not getting nicked because I was only using six pound line. Um, I thought that that was pretty key for me to get bites behind other people out on Shackleton because, like I said, there are tons of guys fishing all these rock piles. Um, so I catch catch a couple off Shackleton, dropping on them, drifting again. Go back to my plan B, and I think I catch a three pounder uh, with like 20 minutes left. I head in, I think I had like 12 something pounds again. Um, that actually ended up getting me 21st. And the tournament, yeah, so it was kind of, it was a pretty tough tournament. I, I was lucky to get five bites each day. I was kind of freaking out um, both days because uh, my plan A and my plan B weren't really working the way I thought they would in the morning. So I had to scramble, go to my plan C, and if you know what Shackleton's like, there's thousands of rock piles out there, and they can move so easily between, between them. So that was kind of why I wanted to stay away. But it actually ended up saving me because the key rock piles that I had marked in practice uh, were reloading with fish every once in a while. It was only like a one fish spot, so uh, fish would keep pulling up to it, and uh, I was able to catch them. 
so that's kind of that's kind of what my game plan was what happened throughout the tournament um i think the biggest thing so far this season for me has been adjusting to the conditions um doesn't always go to plan you have an idea of what happened during practice you have an idea of what you're going to do in the tournament but the weather the conditions are always going to throw you a curveball so you have to be ready to adjust have a spot for every condition every wind every wind uh direction really everything and um so I think being able to adjust to the conditions on a fly, um, kind of forgetting what happened in practice was really what helped save me in the end. Got me a 21st place finish, sitting third in points for the Northern Opens. Uh, need another good tournament at the St. Lawrence, and that's what I'm getting ready for. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I have another good video coming out for that. I'll do another fish catching video and then a recap video like this. So if you guys like this, you have any questions about what I did, what I thought, uh, make sure to comment that below. But I want to say thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.